Can you let people know? Yeah. All right, guys, we'll get started in a few minutes here. Where's her? Never let you on. You can make me a All right, what time is it? Um, seven oh three. All right, we'll get started in like two more minutes, you guys. Wait. And towards the end, we can talk more about the digital side of your business and scaling that up. So let me get my screen up. Let's see. All right, cool. It's not a real long presentation. Is uh, Jim on? I'm not sure. I can't even. Uh -oh. Let me see. It doesn't say you have her admit people. I'm here. Hi. I'm Mikael the second. Hey, morning, you're Mikhail the second, she says. Oh, you're Mikhail the second. Yeah. So you can admit people then. So if you see anybody in the waiting yeah. room, let them in. Yes, I'm the co-host. Okay, perfect. <laughs> Good co-host. And uh, I mean, y'all guys, you guys can take a moment to say hello to our new assistant, Jim. She's been helping us like crazy the last couple She's of weeks. She's more like so. a clone of like Yes. <laughs> More like a clone of us. It's been yeah. amazing. So just uh, say what's up to Jim if you ever talk to her or anything like that. Mm -hmm. um, let's get... In. What up, Jim? <laughs> <laughs> what's up? <laughs> Hello. Good morning. A uh, billionaire, man. Good afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So let's get rolling tonight. Like I said, it's not going to be a long presentation, but my goal tonight is to give you guys the steps to scale your credit business fast, okay? So if you're new, you need to be paying attention. If somebody, if you see somebody in a group that's like, oh, new, any tip, tell them to come back to this class, okay? I'm going to give you some quick steps that you can take to start making money. Oh, did this? All right. So the first thing I want to talk about is the best process to start getting sales in your credit repair business, you guys. The first thing... Like, first thing is going to be your value content. Now, please make sure you're paying attention. Just if, let me turn off my notifications. I feel like um, a Focus. few. Oh, all right. Just hit airdrop. My bad. Focus <laughs> till tomorrow morning. All right. But so just a few weeks ago, I don't know if you guys know who Alex Harmozy is, but he dropped his book called like hundred million dollar leads. And he talked about all of the ways that you need to be generating leads in your business. Right? So the way that I'm talking about right here is value content. That's basically like cold outreach. Those people don't know who you are. It's people's first impression of you. Right. And they, they view your content and they have an opinion about it or whatever, either they're interested, they think it's lame, whatever. Right but you're putting yourself out there for them to even make that decision, right? Mm -hmm. um, but there are other ways of going about being able to um, generate leads and get in front of other people. But the whole point is you need to get in front of other people. And I don't really know of any other way to get in front of a million people 
besides posting value content mm -hmm. or paying to get in front of that audience, right? And if you're just starting out, I can kind of assume you don't have the funds to just pay to get in front of an audience and you probably don't have the right system set up on the back end to take those amount of clients. So um, it's best to start with value content. And it's pretty simple. Like, and I see a lot of people, everyone for the most part uses Instagram, but I try to remind you guys all the time, the first place we made content was YouTube, right? And you really want to understand where your audience is. Like, is your audience actually on Instagram? Are they on TikTok? Or are they somebody who consumes a lot of YouTube videos? They're they're really trying to learn, right? They're not trying to get a 30-second clip. Mm -hmm. And even if you are doing those 30-second clips, you got to make sure that you're directing them to something that's more than five minutes long. Um, and I was also going to say, too, that, you know, if you are putting content on Instagram, make sure that you're also putting that same content on YouTube because one video that Mikhail um, posted on our YouTube page literally got us what, like 900 subscribers in just a couple of days. And we've been okay. building that account for yeah. a long time and it was from a short. So, and it wasn't even a video of us. It wasn't any, it was a vi one of those, um, what user, do they call it? User generated, generated content. It was like these little boys dancing or whatever. And Mikhail put like when, whatever, when you get that approval call from the bank or something, right? And we got like 900 subscribers or more from just that one short. Mm -hmm. So it's so important, important that you're omnipresent, like put your content everywhere because eventually you're going to figure out where your leads are. Right. The leads that we were getting from YouTube, because we were posting long form content, like putting longer videos on YouTube, um, we were getting super quality leads, like people that were ready to buy. It's just, there's something special about YouTube because people go on Instagram uh -huh. to like entertain themselves, right? Uh -huh. People go on YouTube typically to educate themselves. Right. You know, they're looking up, how do I make this meal? How do I do this? How do I change a tire? How do I change the windshield wipers on my car? Okay, those are things that I've looked up. But like you're, they're actively on there using YouTube like Google a lot of the time. Uh -huh. So it's so important that you have your content on multiple platforms. Um, and you're going to see a big change. And again, it's not going to be an overnight thing. Uh -huh. It might be, but most likely it's not going to be, but you have to continue to build on those platforms. You know, I feel like we've never invested like any, like, especially a thousand dollars or more, but like I would say like not even $500 unless the person was on YouTube. Yeah. They like, always we, were we've never, They it's just, there's something about you. Like they just trust you. Like they go to your page. Like people that are on YouTube are typically looking to invest them. Their frauds money. won't go on you basically yeah. like, a fraud, like a person. So when people are looking at your, your short form content, mm -hmm. they're trying to figure out, are you legit or not? Right. The people who are not legit are not on YouTube. So you might as well get on YouTube and make that long form content because yeah. what you'll find out is most people don't even know what the F they're talking about. And by having just your YouTube link in your link tree, you're going to get a ton of subscribers that way. Once you get to a ton of fans, true, like true, on true. Instagram, because my YouTube alone has grown from 300 and something subscribers to almost 800 just, and I'm not even posting any new mm -hmm. content on my sole YouTube account. I haven't posted on there in a few months because Mikhail and I have now have a combined YouTube channel that we use, but it, you know, like the whole point is, is just make sure that you're posting everywhere. Mm -hmm. So the first step is going to be that content. Okay. Now, there are other ways to generate leads and We'll talk about that another time. And that's how you're going to find out where your audience is mm -hmm. by posting in, in as many places as you can. And this Facts. includes Facebook. This includes TikTok. Like we just, we know for a fact that you need to be posting on YouTube. YouTube should be like for sure. That's where you're posting. Even if it's shorts, it doesn't matter if it's, you know. Mm -hmm. Um. So once they become a lead, guys, right? This means that they're interested in learning more about whatever you're offering. So they may become a lead because you told them that, hey, you can get access to my free class. Or they may have become a lead because you said, hey, you can get a free analysis if you go here and book a time, right? So the fact that they become a lead just means that they're interested more and more in about whatever it is that you offer. So they're interested enough that they're willing to give up their information to you, their right. name, their email, their phone number. 
Right. People are curious. They're trying to find out who's real or not. So the next step, right? Once the person says you made the long form content, they've now become a lead and said, I'm interested in your offer. Mm -hmm. The next thing you need to do is you need to get them to fill out a pre-consultation survey, right? If they don't fill out this survey, there's a really high chance they're going to waste your time. They're basically unqualifying themselves right then and there. If they can't follow simple instructions, then they're probably somebody that you don't want to accept money from. Right. Weird. <laughs> so once they have given you that information, this is going to allow you to be able to, um, sorry. Once they give you that information on the survey, this is going to allow you to be able to do the free analysis for their credit report, right? And what I use was the software Loom, right? And I would just I would just record myself on the screen, okay? I would read their credit report as if they were one of my friends or somebody I associated with. Like, I'm not a robot, okay? So I just like break it down to them with passion. So through reading their credit report, I'm going to educate them. I'm going to let them know what's positive. I'm going to let them know what's negative. And then I'm going to let them know what can my company help them with, right? Now, when I was doing credit repair, believe me when I tell you, I was running it up and getting results. And the reason why is probably because I simplified everything. I didn't work on open accounts. I didn't work on late payments. Like I see a lot of you. Student loans, bankruptcy. Yeah, student loans. I didn't. Nope. I showed you. I made a little video showing them how to rehab their student loans and actually gave them a PDF of 100 ways to fix their student loans. So, but no bankruptcies. Things that were foreign to me at that time because I had only cleaned my credit, right? And I didn't know everything about credit, but I knew that I could remove collections, inquiries, charge offs. You could, you knew that you could remove the things that you were able to remove for yourself. Right. So everything else, I just did not include it in my service. If you need to work on an open account, I don't know. I would educate them. Like, obviously I know more now, but at that time I didn't. So I just didn't take on those clients. I see people literally trying to take on clients and they don't know how to solve their problem. And they're like, what should I do? Don't take that person's money. Like It's just that simple, right? Don't even do it. Now, the thing is, I want you guys to understand that you're running a business. And when you're running the business, you don't need to be the person that's actually as executing the dispute process. Like I see so many people trying to like figure out the best way to dispute. Even people come in my inbox like, yo, I'm trying to start my company. What's the best way to dispute? When I had that issue, like of the best way to dispute, it was always, how can I find a better person then? Like, how can, how can I, who actually knows the best process for me as far as dealing with clients? And that's what I was seeking. It was never, how do I do the actual task better? Because I don't have the time to, if you're getting clients, you're not going to have, the, you could get two clients. You ain't going to have the time to do it, especially if you're working on the phone. And um, that's not going to allow for you to scale like that true. if you're the one constantly doing mm -hmm. all the time. It's important that you hire people to help you to do things. For example, hiring Jen, right? We hired Jen because we want to be able to focus on other things. And we want Jen, Jen does a lot of other things for us that like we used to do all the time, you know, and like we don't do those things anymore because she's taken over for us. So right. we want to hire people to do things that you don't want to be spending your time doing all the time. Mm -hmm. Hence this presentation. I was able to write it down in my notes in my phone, pass it to her and then get the presentation made. Right. Like I'm taking it out of my brain and not actually having to physically be there to do it. The same thing with the service. And another thing with the, it's like, none of y'all never hustled anything. So look, when you get the client, the client goes through all of those steps before they seen your value content, they gave you their information, you gave them an analysis. Once you got the client, oh, I forgot what I, oh, once the client pays you, you then pay the assistant. It's like no money came out of your pocket at all. So like, why wouldn't you just do that from the rip? Mm -hmm. Like, <laughs> like it's Instead of wholesaling. The so then all you have to deal with is the front end, mm -hmm. right? It's your business. So you just need to make sure that things are running smoothly. You check in with your dispute manager. Where are, yes. we, where are we at on this? You know, if your dispute manager sends you um, documentation that you need to mail out, you take care of that. 
you know, things like that. Mm -hmm. um, it's a lot easier to manage one person. Your updates on the analysis. So something that Mikhail and I would do is every 30 to 45 days, we would. So that's the next lot. Oh. No, you're good though. I'm, we I'm... would provide a Loom video to them where literally in live time on the Loom, we were refreshing their credit report and saying, okay, look, like this change, okay, your score went down. Why'd your score go down? Let's look, let's compare, right? Mm -hmm. So that's literally what we were doing. And that makes the person that whose credit you're fixing feel comfortable because I can't tell you how many times I have heard from people that they don't hear from the credit company. You know, lack of communication is the biggest thing that you could do to completely kill your business. Mm -hmm. If you don't communicate with your clients, you have to communicate with them. There has to be something wrong with you if you're not. Like, yeah. something got to be missing. It's customer service. So you have to provide really good customer service. Mm -hmm. um, you know, that includes, like, being respectful and things like, like, handle your business as a business, right? Mm -hmm. Like, you just have to think about it as your business and like act as a professional like if you want it to really take off the way that you want it to you know yeah i would say take on everything head on there's going to be issues at some yeah, point for sure and when the issue arises you need to be the person to stand in the front of it mm -hmm. like that's Excuse just me, how it goes an example yeah so like an example would be with, uh, um, with kendall yeah i had a friend that actually got credit repair from someone i know and um what happened was so I believe she had like, um, let's see, I believe she had people working for her doing yes. the disputing, like, but she was training them personally. Mm -hmm. And a person made an error and disputed a positive account and a positive multiple account. Multiple positive accounts. Damn. Well, multiple positive accounts and uh, accounts got shut down. And my friend was literally on the plane from Pennsylvania to Germany at the time. And he was like, yo, like all my accounts. So what happened was it was like so late at night and he was blowing up this person's phone, even though it's like two o'clock in the morning, because he's like, my credit like, is all messed up now. Like, I can't even use these cards. I, my door to daycare, things like that. Right. And uh, I believe the person. Do you want me to finish? Do you remember what happened? I remember. Oh, okay. well, you know, I mean, if you think you remember. Say, so what happened was the person who was fixing the credit reached out to Mikhail and I and said, yo, like, you need to get your friend in order you know and we were like well what happened like explain to us what happened so the person explained to us what happened and we said to them you know like this is your business and this is how you need to handle it you need to let them know that you're taking the l like this was our fault we're going to fully acknowledge that it was our fault and we're going to do what we need to do in order to rectify the situation uh -huh. so what we and like coached the person to do was to say you know we're going to assist you in sending out any letters to these companies that we need to. But what I need for you to do, talking to Mikhail's friend, is the person, uh, Mikhail's friend needed to call the companies to say, hey, it was done in error. What do you need from me? And then that person took it upon themselves to help our friend to get the situation fixed. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that could have gone completely sideways. Like it already wasn't starting off good, but the person was able to fix the situation where at first they weren't you know, interested. They were really pissed, pissed off the that the person was blowing them up and all right. that stuff. So just so you know, like there are going to be things that happen, mistakes happen, but you have to be able to say, okay, it was my fault. I'm taking the L. I'm sorry. You know, I apologize. And here's what I can do to fix the situation. Mm -hmm. Yep. So in that same analysis that you're doing on Loom, make sure that you give them the price. And if you guys are not familiar with Loom, this right here on my desktop, is loom you can download the desktop app on your phone i mean on your um desktop and you can actually have it on your phone and it works just like this like i'm not sure if it'll show two cameras at once let's see okay cool so i would just literally how i'm recording right here i would hit the start record button and record my their analysis just like that and the cool thing is once it's done once you hit done it saves it in a link so you send the link to the client or potential client. So think of it as like a YouTube video, right? Like when you upload a YouTube video, YouTube gives you a link if you want to share it with people. Mm -hmm. So Loom gives you a link so that you can share that link with people. But the difference is with that link, you're going to be notified when the person views the video. So it's allowing you to send that link to the person. You can even do this pre-consultation, which is what that, we advise you to do. 
is to send it before the call is even scheduled. So now the person knows exactly what to expect. They now know the price. They know what can be fixed. They know what cannot be fixed. So it might even eliminate you having to get on the phone at all with that because they might say, hey, I can't afford it this week, you know, but next Friday I'm in. Mm -hmm. Or they might say, I have a couple questions that I need to ask. Can we still have our call at three o'clock? You know, it's just really going to eliminate a lot of the time wasting phone calls, because I know that you guys probably get on the phone with people. Everybody's had it in this industry. Get on the phone with somebody. They tell you their whole life story about how their mom screwed up their credit and so and so like stole their identity. You know, uh, it's always a blame game, but whatever. (laughs) You don't need to hear all that. They just need to hear from you on how you can fix their situation. You don't need to hear how they got to where they are. Okay. Cause that's not what we're here to talk about. So yeah. the reason why we're telling you guys all this is because this is what worked for us when we had a credit repair company. Mm-hmm. And the reason why our system and the uh, uh, snapshot that you guys get when you sign up for consult me, please, like and get our system and our templates and everything. It's literally a copycat of our business. Like we're literally copy and pasting our business and what worked. Mm -hmm. So I understand that some people might, you know, tweak things, change things, whatever, but understand that that's not what worked for us. (laughs) Like Mm -hmm. This is what worked for us. And we were so successful in our business that we were able to step away from the service side and move over to the digital side. Mm -hmm. So we're telling you this because this is what worked. If you want to tweak it and change it, like that's, you know, that's all fine. But we're literally just trying to give you the blueprint of what worked. Yeah, I already tweaked and and messed, uh, mixed up a snapshot already. You should have seen it. When, you should have seen yeah, it. It was bad. I'll tell them the story about that in a minute. Oh, that's going to be hilarious. So give them the price in that Zoom analysis, in that Loom analysis, okay? And just like while you're talking, just let them know, hey, look, um, you know, I'm looking at your report. I see like the only thing that's wrong is your utilization. You probably don't need me. Like just be transparent. Don't just try to get their money. And then I always just made it like, to the point where I gave them so much information, I could be like, hey, what I just told you, you can see your scores increase by itself. But if you want my team to work on those negative accounts, that'll be something that we can do. Or you can go work on them yourself. But those are the ones that need to be addressed, okay? Um, So I typically send it back to the potential customer about 20 minutes before the call. And I got better as I went along, but it would pretty much be a damn slam dunk. Like, because you got to understand that you're positioning yourself so much far further ahead of the competition. Like there's over a hundred some people in the credit influencer Academy. I bet you probably less than 10 of them are doing those loom analysis. So that means that if you have the ability to stomp the competition, because people aren't going to sign up with these people because they don't trust them. This, all this stuff is based on building trust, Mm -hmm. right? We've been studying this for like 10 years on how to, get people to trust you right because we all have have people want to buy from you like Mm -hmm. we have literally studied for 10 plus years how to have have people feeling so comfortable with you that they're ready to pull out their credit card and buy Mm -hmm. and on the back end how to provide over the top 10x what they paid for service Mm -hmm. so that you don't ever have your name you know tarnished or whatever yeah right yep So do this 20 minutes before the call, send them the Loom video. And the reason I'm saying 20 minutes is because the analysis usually is about 20 minutes long. So they're going to need some time to watch it. So you're going to get notified the moment they start watching it. Keep in the back of your mind how long the video was so that you know how long it's going to be. But a lot of times, right at the end, they'll just be like, all right, I'm ready to sign up. Or they'll tell you whatever they want to do. Send me the invoice. Send me the invoice. I got one or two questions. Let's do it oh and that that's the other thing too make sure that when they say send me the invoice that you're ready to take payment <laughs> yeah. um had quite a few people that have asked me you know what do they sign up for to accept payments and i mean we've you it's what another slide mm-hmm. okay i'll shut up you can see she ain't looking at the slide y'all <laughs> i'll shut up she working too light <laughs> no 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 but you're good when we get there you can yeah. that's an all right bet so on the phone call, because I just want to kind of go no, in order. on the phone call, guys, make sure that you're not wasting time. Um, maybe something I can do is like put together a script. Like if you guys would be interested in a script, let me know. But actually, um, I have 
I have recordings of my sales calls in the course, I think, somewhere. No, uh, I don't know that you do. I think it's in um, how to start, how to get your first 100 clients ebook. If you guys would like to get the recordings to that, let me know in the chat as well. So we have a recording of Mikhail like on his very first call with somebody and they just totally railroaded him. Mm -hmm. And then we have another call later on after Mikhail like perfected his craft. And so we can provide you with both. And put out a hundred plus pieces of value content. <laughs> Once you put out the value content, guys, there's no talking on the phone. I'm just trying to tell y'all. The They're excited to get on with those. Yeah, they like think they would never talk to you on the phone ever. So um, the objections on the call is just going to be like how much, how soon, and like, am I going to hear from you again? Like, are you going to scam me? So you make sure you answer all those questions and don't waste time. Like, don't get into their backstory and all that other stuff. Like, let them know you got more people to talk to. And if they really want your help, you're here to do it. But you can't do anything until the payment's made. So take their invoice using QuickBooks. That's what we did personally. Um, like. How easy? Oh, we're on the quick voice slide, Dom. How easy is quick huh? um quick books? Quick voice. <laughs> quick voice. Okay. Quick invoice, man. So QuickBooks is what I recommend for you to sign up with. Like I've seen people use Stripe, I've seen people use PayPal. I'm like that's all good and fine if that's what you decide to use. But I'm just gonna tell you what after using multiple different platforms for the past 10 years, like I've used so many. Okay, I was getting working capital loans from PayPal years ago before people were even talking about paypal working capital loans period okay so quickbooks is what i recommend because you need quickbooks for your business period because you need to keep track of your spending you know um any money that you're spending on uh, advertising marketing anything that you purchase for your office you know anything Merch. like that it all needs to be going through quickbooks so that come tax time and when you need to provide those pnl statements and all those things like this might be above some of your heads but like it, those are all things that quickbooks is going to help you to provide so it's important sign up for quickbooks online it's like 15 dollars a month and it's going to allow for you to send invoices to your clients and what I love is it allows your client to choose multiple ways to pay. Uh -huh. They can send via ACH. They can send, um, I think they even have like, they have debit card, credit card. They have some other options in there too. I think like Apple Pay. But what I'm trying to say is they have multiple ways to pay you using the invoices. And people are very comfortable and very familiar when they see QuickBooks, mm -hmm. right? So if they see that you're using QuickBooks, okay, it's a, it's a legit business. Like that's literally what I use to send um, invoices to my um, photo booth clients. So, and I've never had anybody question it ever. All you're gonna do is put that it's for six months of consulting or however long your um, term works. is for the service, right? Mm -hmm. So that's all you're gonna do is just put consulting in there. Then they can pay however they want. And then two to three days later, it goes into your business bank account. So that's the other thing. Make sure you have a business bank account. <laughs> So make sure that you go and open a business bank account. I believe QuickBooks even offers some sort of like checking account or something like that. But I'd recommend going to a bank and just getting, you know, your business checking account. Okay. So you can use Quick QuickBooks to send them an invoice. <laughs> sorry. I'm like saying voice and voice and everything. I know. I have a piece of hair. Like, I'm sorry, y'all. I just shaved my, my mustache right quick. And I feel like a piece of hair. Whatever. Oh. So after you have signed up the person, the person has paid, right? I personally, and in the course you'll see, I use Credit Repair Cloud. Now, it's been like a year since I canceled mine. So there may be other ones that are better. Like, like again, I'm real simple. I just like to work with what works. You know, Dispute Box is something that I know people like because the price is better. Um, and it's very comparable to Credit Repair Cloud. So I know a lot of people have been using Dispute Fox. We just reference Credit Repair Cloud more, not because we recommend it. It's just what we use. So right. if there's a better software out there, by all means, go for it. Like, mm -hmm. we're not going to say, no, don't use that. Just use Credit Repair Cloud. Like, we don't get crap if you sign up for Credit Repair Cloud. Like, we don't care what you sign up for. Just do what works. Right. So once the person pay you, you want to, this is like one of the things you have to do. Like, you can... You want to master this entire process and then hand it over to somebody else, right? But in the beginning, you have to master the entire process. So once they pay, you want to manually enroll them into your credit repair CRM software. So if it's credit repair cloud, so when I do the analysis, not only do I look at their identity IQ, 
at that same time, I go ahead and import them into the software, into the credit repair cloud. So I give them two analysis. I give them the analysis of their identity IQ, and then I give them the analysis that credit repair cloud gives as well. It's just like knocking out two birds with one stone because you're going to need to import the person as a lead at some point if you're going to, you know, if they're going to become a customer at some point. So I figured I might as well just do it then um, because the process is going to go pretty simple if you do it right, like pretty smooth. So once the person is paid, I would go back into Credit Repair Cloud and I would switch them from being a lead to them being a sale. Once I switch them from being a lead to a sale, I also assign them to my dispute manager. So in whatever you have, whichever software you're using, there should be a section that says staff or members. Add your credit repair dispute manager in there as a admin or whatever, right? So that now when you move the clients over, you just can quickly assign them to them, right? And then the last thing that you need to make sure you do is assign them to your dispute manager. And don't forget to retrieve the client's SSN card for that dispute manager because with Credit Repair Cloud, and I'm sure, well, I'm not sure if the other ones are just like this, but it doesn't automatically ask the person for their social. It only asks them for their um, proof of ID and their proof of address. So the, the social part was manual. So what I did was I went inside of Credit Repair Cloud and I created an email template. And in that email template, I could then go ahead and as um, soon as the person signed up, I would go and I would also give them that like email template. I would send them an email with that template really quick. And that email template would go something like this. Upload your SSN, S SSN card here. And then on the inside of it, it'll say, hey, this is where you upload your social security card. This is the last step for us to begin disputing for you. So when their report refreshes every 30 to 45 days, so the, re the report's going to refresh every 30 days at least, right? Especially if you're using Identity IQ, it's every 30 days. But if you have a lot of clients, that's why we say 30 to 45 days, because obviously like you're going to go on vacation sometimes and things like that, you know, you might be sick or whatever. So give yourself 30 to 45 days and let, this is something that you need to include within your expectations of credit repair. That's something that we've talked about. Are you going to do a slide for that? No, I don't. <laughs> do a I'm, slide for the training have part. Time. Do you have a slide for the training part, like offering that? No, I don't have enough. Okay. So just to kind of like reiterate something that um, Mikhail and I had set up for our credit repair business, we did talk about this on a previous slide, but I just wanted to bring it up again. Um, another great way to add instant value to your service is to have a back office of some kind for your clients where you're furthering, further educating them about credit, um, how to go and uh, apply for a new car, like how to get approved for credit cards when it comes that time, right? Because it's not, it's about providing really good customer service. And I can tell you right now that a lot of these credit repair companies are not providing any, what do I do next type of you know, right. of any sort. So it's really good that you can create those kinds of things. And we did, um, didn't you provide, we did it. I forget what, when we did that, when we talked about it, I don't know. Anyway, that's just something that we recommend that you create because it's going to add instant value to your service. And it allows for you to increase your price a little bit. And somebody that just, um, did this recently was key Kivan. Mm -hmm. Um, and she made so many videos, like giving them so oh, much so value and it's just allowing her to um, charge more for credit repair, but it's also making the person that's purchasing the credit repair feel more comfortable too, because it's like, okay, I'm paying for your service, but I'm also getting something tangible out of this, something that I can study, something that I can get educated on. I'm not going to share with my family. Yes. And it's, bless you. And it's also um, where you can include where I said those expectations of credit repair. We do have uh, like a template of some kind in the uh, Credit Influencer Academy. But I highly suggest that you also like add in your little things in there too. Like what are your expectations of credit repair? And this is also where you want to make sure to include for those times where people are like, oh, you know, I know you're working on my credit, but I just went and um, I needed a car. So I went and, you know, I have a bunch of inquiries. Like, can you take care of those too? So like, you need to have that in your contract and your expectations of credit. Like, let them know what your um, policy is on that, right? So if they go and get new 
inquiries, new collections, new charge offs, anything like that, you need to make sure that you have in there, like these are the steps that we follow and this is the price that it's going to be. Because it's not something that you should just be like, sure, 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 we'll throw that under the umbrella too. Like, no, like that's not how it works. Okay. This is a business. That's not how like businesses do business. We don't just add things in for free. That's not how it works. So make sure that you have those things spelled out in your contract um, and in your expectations of credit repair as well. Okay. Uh, so something I would do is carve out two days out of the week. And it's not the entire day because I know some of y'all be like, oh, he said, well, all I got to do on Thursday is this. Like, no, like maybe like two hours out of the day where You're it's saying like dedicate. Two yeah, days. two days where you give those clients updates. So for me, when I started getting like 20 plus clients or whatever, it started getting crazy because, you know, I was having to do I was getting yeah. backed up like, oh, I, I owe somebody a review. It's been 30 days. And I couldn't do it like right on that day. So what I started doing was just picking days where I could do a bunch and I would just do them all at one time and just be done. And that started to wear me out towards the end, which is why I transitioned. But it's a lot it like imagine out. just being on the, like even having a conversation on the phone with someone for hours and hours and hours. Like it takes a lot out of you. Like get off the phone. You're like, oh, all right. Mm -hmm. Now what? You know, like imagine just doing that over and over. So yeah takes a lot out of you but always remember it beats going to work and it beats being broke that's for sure, for sure. yes uh what was on the other slide um that's it these are the slides from the beginning guys um that's really it um as far as what i have for tonight there are some other things i wanted to touch on as well as far as like um, let me look at my notes here. Hold on a second. Oh, All right. Okay, so I've been seeing a lot of people. I don't know if you're using a buffer app or, you know, a lot of you guys are just stepping out there and you're posting a lot of good content, but I've been seeing a lot of good content. Um, one thing I'm going to say is don't miss out on setting up your automations, you guys. Like, Dom, have you seen somebody? I'm not sharing my screen. Oh, I didn't know if you were. If you seen somebody uh, post a video and it had like 20 comments mm -hmm. and there was no response, what would your reaction be? Fake. Oh, like the person's fake? Yeah, I'd be like, Damn. what the hell? Like, that's so weird. Like when you see that somebody has a ton of comments and they're not responding back to them. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, it just, it looks, it makes it look like clickbait. You know, like it's not a real person. Like it's mm -hmm. a fake page. Like you want to see interaction. And that's something that we were doing manually in the in beginning the of our business. Every time somebody would comment anything, we would have to manually copy, paste, copy, paste, copy, paste to everybody. Mikhail and I would do it together. So that was helpful, but it's still like, once we realize that we can automate it, we're like, hell yeah. Like we want to automate anything and everything that we can so that we can focus on things that we want to do. Like putting out new content, you know? So Yeah, so um, many chat is what we use to respond to our comments. And then the Consult Me Please software is what we use to respond to our DMs. So, and then Buffer mm -hmm. is what we use to put out content. We schedule our content now. Yeah. Um, I talked about Buffer last week. I know, but I was going to say, like, I'll literally be, there's an app for it too. Mm -hmm. So make sure you download the Buffer app because literally what I do, go to Instagram. We talked about this last week, but... Go to Instagram, use that video that I made where you can download all of your previously posted content, save it on your phone, okay? Um, or if you don't want to do it that way, you can always go to Snap Insta and just download your videos directly to your phone that way. And then literally I just lay in, when I'm laying in bed at night with the baby, like getting ready to put him to bed, I just sit there and I schedule out my posts for overnight and for the next day. Like I try to schedule as many as I can because then literally the next day, I don't have to do anything. Right. <laughs> it's already done. Like, I don't have to sit yeah. there and post and think about what am I going to post? I can. But can we talk post. about how much I had I to can... get on your head for that? Just a baby. Get <laughs> um, off my head. Okay. okay so okay. I can post uh, um, strategically, right? So I would post like about um, comment credit. Like, I would do one about that. And then the next one would be about credit influencer. And then I would do another one about credit, another one about credit influencer. And I can tell you right now that it really has helped to pick up on the leads because that's why we post. We post for the lead, not for the sale. And I'm telling you right now, like we've had so many leads just by being able to schedule out the posts. It just makes it so much. And you can 
pick one you want to schedule. Like mm-hmm. I was doing posts like every two hours the one day. Right. So definitely make sure you're utilizing it. It'll make your life easier. Um, another thing I want to talk about is storytelling. I turned off that. I turned off that heater. I think it's the lights. Hmm. Um, storytelling. So, uh, one person I seen that was doing really good. Look um, at the chat too, because there's people talking in there. I, I'll get to the chat in a second. Um, Stephanie, I think, uh, Miss Credit Coach or something on Instagram. Think yeah, I jumped back on today. Yeah. <laughs> I, I love those videos today. I've been, I've been, I actually had surgery like three weeks. You know, I started and then I was like, oh God, I'm, I'm feeling better. And so I made a commitment. It was so hard. I'm going to do three a day for 30 days. I'm throwing okay. it out there so you guys can hold me accountable. Okay. Well, we noticed. Days. The only right. thing is like, I have to manually because, you know, I just store the stuff about mini right. chats. And all of this. Now I have to manually for every single one of these comments say consult consultation and link. Mm-hmm. So I'm gonna try. To, I don't know if it's too late to do mini chat because oh. I not at all, not at all. Because those posts are gonna keep. So the way Instagram works, and not to cut you off, but the way Instagram works is typically the post doesn't start really picking up right away. It takes like almost up to thirty days. Mm-hmm. So if you got some engagement now. That's really good. Just wait until 30 days when it come back around. Like I'm seeing posts that I posted 30 days ago now start taking off. I'm sorry. Um, but um, yeah, that's uh, that's what you can do. So it won't capture the people that have commented before, but it will capture the people that Future. comment moving forward. And that's fine. There's been, so there was a uh, time, Key, I think, it, or is May on here? Or remember, like there was a time, like uh, maybe early in September when many chat wasn't working. Oh my god! Oh my god! It was terrible. It was so bad. It wasn't working, and it didn't work for like three or four days. They were down. It was a situation with Meta, so it wasn't working on Instagram for comments. Or it was so bad, and we were generating so many leads, and we're like. We can't not post like we have to keep posting mm-hmm. so we were manually having to go in and reply to the comments and then send them the link manually oh my god it was a mess and then we tried to tell them to um just dm us you know right. but you know people don't listen online you tell them to dm or dm they still gonna comment so they always comment um let me see i got some more notes so don't miss your automations on your post. Yeah, like don't run half the play, y'all. Run the whole play, like everything for it to work. Like there's no way. It's so crazy. Like there could be one thing that I'm not doing right in my business, like when it comes to doing the whole entire structure and system, and it will mess up everything. Like it could mess up the everything. There's days where like, let's say like I'm like midway through the day and I'm like, yo, I'm really like, Either I've made no money or something like it's really extremely low. So at that point, I can go look at my website and I'll find like, oh, snap, like we left the old coupon code up or something. You know what I mean? Like all sorts of things. There's always a reason why. Like the play works. You guys have to run it all the way through. Um. Okay. The next thing that you guys can do is to speed up the sales in your business is to get your assets built. So let me see here. Let me show you guys some assets that I've been working on the last couple. Like I haven't been able to go live on Instagram because we've gotten so many clients as far as like done for you's and stuff like that and partnerships and stuff. It's been nuts. So let's see here. Um, so smartphone billionaire, I got you on blast right now, bro. But some of the, um, some of the products that he has, like he's just getting his assets built out. So number one, getting the big bundle done out and, and having everything branded the right way. The next thing is that next asset is his webinar that he's doing, right? We're doing a live webinar every week and there's a whole process to running the live webinar play, right? Like, it's really not, like, as simple as it seems as far as, like, hey, I'm just going to do a live webinar and show up. There's a lot that goes into the back end for it to work the right way. And um, I'm sorry, May's not – is May on here? No. 
May's been running the webinar play, and she can let you know if it's been spitting out money. It's been spitting out money like crazy. So all of you guys, I believe, especially if you're into making content, like I used to go live all the time, but I'm like, wait, I could just funnel everybody into a webinar if I wanted to go live and actually make a presentation, deliver heavy, and then make an offer that makes sense. And then I won't be spending a lot of my time or a feel as though I'm not maximizing my time. So now the way our done for you works is it's it's twenty five hundred to get it built out, but um you get one asset built though. Like so, if you want the live webinar, if you want an evergreen webinar, if you want your credit repair business, if you want to do a challenge, explain like what an evergreen webinar is. Okay, a live webinar for people that don't know. All right. So let's see here. Uh, and I have templates for everything. So if you're interested in teaching people business credit, I have a template. I have multiple templates for that. If you want to teach credit repair or the foundation of credit so that you can get people to sign up for your credit repair business or your course, I have templates for that as well. So the difference between a live webinar and an evergreen webinar, a live webinar is going to be a webinar where you're actually live. Like, it's Sunday at 8 p.m. and you're going to show up every Sunday at 8 p.m. until you can't go anymore. And on that webinar, what we've been doing is we actually offer something before the webinar, right? We give people like, uh, like a like a like a kickstart, like because the webinar is on Sunday. Today is only Tuesday, so if I'm promoting it right now, there's a good chance that you might grab whatever it is because you could like speed up your results. You can get started um, working and learning today instead of waiting until Sunday. And the way that I figured out that this made sense was when we just went to that Drake concert and we're outside, and we're, we're buying merch, right? When we're outside buying merch, everybody outside buying merch. Uh, Hold on. So when I'm outside, it's like the same thing. Like I'm at a live event, right? We're hosting a virtual event. People still want to grab stuff to go with the event because that's just how we're wired. But basically, if you're not offering anything, you're going to be leaving things on the table. Leaving money on the table. Money on and the table. And opportunity on the table too, because some of those things that you might be, you know, offering, even if it's just an ebook, like for example, like one of our ebooks that we sold was um, get your first 100, 100 clients in your credit repair business, right? Mm -hmm. And people that are purchasing that, they're buying that before they get to watch a replay of a training that we did ultimately for them to invest into the Credit Influencer Academy, mm -hmm. right? So if by us offering that, that's like, opening the doors for the future okay i just wish they could see the baby because they um they buy that book right and then they're gonna be like okay cool like they really have it like figured out like this is really cool so it's gonna make them feel more comfortable we're earning their trust even more and they're gonna want to invest with us in the future mm -hmm. you know so you're giving them something like tangible that mm -hmm. they have and i'm telling you guys the offer before the webinar be selling like hotcakes so he had a bunch of different products already that he wasn't necessarily using in the offers that he promotes right now. So what we did was we just took some of them, even maybe this is um, all the right ones. Yeah, yeah. like, you know, just move some things around with the things that he already has, because a lot of you guys are hoarding your assets. Right. And some of you are hoarding your assets just in your brain. <laughs> Like there's things that you literally your notes. take out of your brain, take out of your notes, take out of what you've learned on all these live classes that we've taught and put it in a book, Right. you know, put it in an ebook. And this product, uh, there's one thing missing from here, right, Don? No, there's multiple things missing. Oh, she said it's not the right. All right that so was maybe... like the original one. That Let me look did. down here. Let me see. I think that. There we go. There we go. There we go. There we go. Uh, <laughs> so guys, this offer. That's well, not it either. That's not ahead. it either. They got another one this one yeah okay so um like we say we're just moving around things this offer can go anywhere between 27 to 17 dollars and you're promoting you're promoting a free class right but they can purchase this to go along with the class and people buy this like crazy 
And what else did I want to say? Um, so you offer it for them for $27. And then on the back end, if they don't buy, we offer it again at $17. Mm -hmm. So more than likely, like people are going to at least- Who's not buying that for $27? Right. If you're coming to the webinar to learn how to fix your credit or get funding and not be broke- Anything related, as long as it's related to what you're about to watch, right. they're most likely going to buy. Who's and if they not? don't buy, they're not even- going to buy whatever you're offering on your free class or your you know webinar or whatever you're doing so they might still buy that they might they might they but might still not. like i mean if you ain't going to invest 27 dollars or like, even 17 right like if they say no to 27 and then they say no to 17 like yeah, well, wow yeah yeah but we just want to make sure that we're delivering something like where it's like a no-brainer like why are you not buying is something wrong with my product like you know so i'm saying this to say Guys, if you need the done for you, we can help you to build out your assets to get things rolling a lot faster. Like um, Kiara just finished up her course. I'm sure she'll let us know. But if you if you let us know, how long did it take you to, you know, get everything done? And are you even um, feeling like you have everything done? Because it could take a while and we could just help you to maybe chop the time down in half. Look at the chat. too. Oh, yeah. May's, May's challenges challenge. this week. She does it during mm -hmm. the day, though, doesn't she? Oh, yeah, yeah. May's been doing her challenge at 11, and she said it's been amazing. So um, that was something we were kind of, like, testing. Because I know, Key, you know how you're doing your – um, you're going to be doing your free class um, in the morning time. <laughs> you see what Zach, you said, look, Drake Ticket's letting us know the webinars work. It, it's true. So true. <laughs> but Key's doing her class in the morning at 9, because she said that's typically – when her audience is engaging with her on TikTok. So can you let me in? That's me. Oh my goodness. I'm gonna show them the video. <laughs> so uh what's crazy is that we wanted to test out to see like would people purchase a challenge that's at 11 a.m. I've done a challenge at 11 a.m. but I'm like I've never hosted one at 11 a.m. I was a part of one but I should have known my thing is like entrepreneurs typically like if they're all in like they're not working. So when you're not working, like nine, um, like eleven a.m. is the best time for real. Mm -hmm. So May's been hosting hers at eleven, and it's it's been working. It's been working. It's been really good. The live webinar that she did, she did the webinar for like three weeks. I think she did three of them live, and then we would post a replay as well, and that was amazing. Um. So yeah, and uh, that's like a little partnership that we have going to. So, I mean, I'm really just trying to make sure that everybody got the assets and, and you know, rolling the right way. There's still a few people I still need to catch up with this week. Uh, I'm hoping I can, man. Just things been so hectic. But um, I'm opening it up. Let me see. I think I have like two more small minded hiring help, which we talked about already. Make sure you guys can hire help. Like so when it came to us hiring help, the first step was writing down 50 tasks that somebody could do for you. Like what are 50 things that you do in your business that you could like hand off to an assistant? Once you have those 50 things written down, it's go time. Like you can, you probably know that you need some content. You need some flyers. You need your results that people have been sending you. You need it sauced up a little bit. Um, You might need content ideas. What else could you do? You might need them to do, um your uh, reviews or whatever book analysis there's so i you mean for an assistant yeah the i used DMs, to have it all like answer, answer the DMs, dms answer your comments right you set got an assistant you chat. got somebody in your comments all day yeah set up many chat set up like, many chat did you say posting content set scheduling up, content uh -huh. organize my calendar content. what all else what's that what any, anything else your, on the board checking your emails Checking your email, making sure everybody got their login. People into the Facebook group. Facebook group. I mean, the list goes on and on. Monitoring your Zoom. <laughs> so your Dom got the the uh, mock-ups. Yes, Dom got the baby. I have the baby on. And I, I know you're probably off for the night, Jim. If you're off, thank you for um, being here. We'll talk to you tomorrow. Um. Someone said, where do we find these? Because these 42 inquiries are beyond me. I don't have time. Oh, my God. So if you're looking for a dispute manager assistant. So, guys, is anybody in the chat or can hop on? 
I usually give my dispute manager like all the time. He's probably in like if you go watch the replays of like the live classes, kind of talk about him all the time. His name is even saved here in my computer now. So I'm going to put him in the chat. You guys can always reach out to him. I don't make no bread. No, nah, you're good, Jem. Get some sleep. Or, you know, go go do your thing. I'm good for today. <laughs> Bye, everyone. Bye, Jem. See you next two weeks. Yep. See you. <laughs> sleep well. <laughs> Bye. Thank you so much. Bye, everyone. Um, so I just posted CMs in um, Facebook in the chat, you guys. So you can always reach out to him. He was the guy who right now he said he does $125 for four rounds. That's that's a lot. I mean, like as far as four rounds, like that's really good. So you get the client, charge $500 or more, and then you pay CM $125 and the deal is done. Mm -hmm. Um, if you need to like evaluate him and stuff like that, do that. Like I interviewed him. That's how I, you know, felt comfortable with him. But yeah, 42 inquiries. That's like the same. Listen, first client, my cousin, I'm on the way to the Poconos with my friends. I'm like, yo, I started this credit business. I'm about to be getting this money. My cousin sent me the 300 I charged, which was nothing. Um, I drank that whole weekend, went home on Monday. Don went to work. I went out back and I started doing the the inquiries right and i looked at his report and it was like 39 of them and i was like oh, you know and this is multiple bureaus and so i did it and then after that i'm on the hunt for cm i hired cm that night mm -hmm. <laughs> this was last uh not april of lot of this year but april of last year so 2022 april some crap like that i've interviewed him on video chat he's pretty thorough yeah he's awesome okay okay Thank you, Kiara, for that. Um, I don't think I have any more things to talk about. So hiring help and then creating your course. So guys, creating a course is pretty simple. I think um, the first, let me actually, let me see. I have some notes that I can give you guys. Um, DIY course outline. Um, did I wrote, I write these like all the time. Like I'll write it in my phone. And then, like, I'm supposed to, like, put it somewhere. And then the next time I want to do it again, I'll just write it all the way from scratch again. It is what it is. But here's a DIY credit repair course outline that you guys can use right there. Um, I just put it in the chat. But you want to start with your outline. And the outline is going to start with what is the outcome of this course? Like, what is the outcome? I want to help. So um, let me see. So the outcome means, what does outcome mean? It means how... This is CM here, y'all. So the outcome means basically like what is the outcome going to be for the person? Mm -hmm. Yes. Like what are they going to get out of it? Like what can they expect um, to know how to do or to learn? Like what's the end result for them after watching your course or going through your Exactly. Course? So we've created tons and tons and tons and tons of courses over the years. So the first way you start is by asking, what is the outcome? Like, what is the person, what is going to happen at the end of this course? Like, are they going to learn how to set up an LLC themselves? Are they going to make more money? What is it? That's how you start it out. After that, you then got to build out the modules. Because I help people build tons of credit courses, I already know the blueprint that works. I like we have like one of the best in the world, I would say, as far as DIY credit repair course. Um, I always start, you always start a course with the mindset because a lot of times, like a lot of times your program is not going to be the first program people have bought. And there's probably a high, like a high chance that the information inside of your program, they've already received some of that information somewhere else. They just ain't acted on it yet. So a lot of times it's just mindset. There's been so many people that have um, purchased our stuff and they're like, you know, I was about to quit. Or I was about to give up. And the mindset section is what helped me to keep rolling. Um, so I don't know if a lot of people are missing that section in their courses Sorry. or whatever. It's going to ding it's again. It's going to ding again. Yeah. Ask another question. It's on do not disturb, just not listening. Yeah. Um, what was I saying there, though? Oh, creating your courses. Um, you all start with mindset. And then 
you go with why credit is important. Like what, how can credit change your life? That's like the second section I would do. And then I will go ahead into the fundamentals of credit. So breaking down each of the five factors, talk about statement date and due date, just things that the average person wouldn't know. The basics. The basics and just making sure that they're aware of all those things. Then I move into my credit repair sauce. Like everybody has their own way of going about it, I believe. So that section needs to be dedicated to fixing credit. After you've done that, you need to have a section that is dedicated to building credit. And then anything else that you add after that, it's really a bonus. That's up to you. But those are the basic fundamentals you need in a course. When it comes to recording your course, when I started, I... um Using Zoom, right? Mm -hmm. um, I use Zoom. Like I would just hop on Zoom just like this, record it. And then once I was done in that section, I would hop off and start a new Zoom mm -hmm. and then just keep on going. So like, and then I would just make a bunch of Zooms and I would title them the name of the video. And then when I was done, just download them and then you can upload them into your course like we show you. Something else that we recommend too when you're making your course is to create slideshows. Like simply just put the information, yeah. make it visual for people. Don't feel like putting, don't think that you need to put all the information on one screen. Like break up your sentences, break up the information because it's going to help to keep people engaged during okay. the presentation. Um, and it's going to really help you to keep the presentation moving along. And you don't want to have like, like I said, all the words on there, all at once. Like you don't want to just read word for word. Um, you can include in there, like just your main points that you want to touch on and then elaborate on each of those things too. Um. I'm getting better at not putting everything all on one and just trying to like split it up. That's something that we definitely, that's a newer thing that we learned is to not put it all. Like really, if your presentation, and I know Melanie, <laughs> like she like loves to put, like her mm -hmm. eBooks are so long and like all the information she has is so long. And that's what you want. Mm -hmm. You want it to be long. Like you want it to keep going because when people see an eBook or a presentation and it's like, 200 slides they are going to be like, holy crap, that's 200 pages of information that I just invested my money into, mm -hmm. you know? So think about it like that. Um, So just giving you guys a little example of what Dominique's talking about. So for the credit influencer, when we were building it out, like I would make a slide credit influencer Academy offers. And then I would come in here, hop in zoom or loom. And I would just hit present present. And I would just, <laughs> and I would just record my video. So you want to build it out before, like make the slides and stuff like that, write it down in here and then just come and record it. Now, I don't think this was the whole thing. Oh yeah. This was probably like one of our longer videos. See, look at all that, those words. Like we could have right. added more slides. And at this point, sure. like we made this before chat GPT oh, came right. out at this point. Yeah. Y'all could be chat GPC and everything and like, copy. you know, we just really, we really do this and we want you to understand it's not really that hard. It just takes commitment, but it pays off in the end. You know, I think there's one more thing I want to talk about, I think, or maybe not tonight's class. Let's see. Oh, creating your course was the last thing, y'all. Okay. So Kiara put in the chat, here's some questions that I asked Sam. So a dispute manager, are you able to use Dispute Fox? Great question, right? Because I didn't know how to use Credit Repair Cloud besides putting them in there as a lead. So he damn sure needed to know how to use it. <laughs> uh, how would you look? How would that look if we hire you? Do we give you access to our account? Okay, that's good. Do we mail letters? Do you mail letters through the software for us to dispute with the CFPB? How do you go about making the account? Mm-hmm. How do you send us tracking numbers? How much do you charge per client until the account is removed? Who sent that? Kiara. That's really good. Um, are you able to remove multiple late payments on an open account to keep that account open? What do you say about that? We didn't used to do that back in the day. What? Do you delete bankruptcies? He said, no. yeah, you could charge a little more. That's what he used to tell me. Um, how do you update us on each client? Is there a report? Maybe he charges more. Mm -hmm. Did he say he send screenshots? And what is the average amount of time to get all accounts deleted after the first round? And are you familiar with Metro 2? And do you, mm, great questions. Thanks. Mm -hmm. um, I can actually tell you what he said. I kind of wrote um, notes on it. Um, he did tell me he can just 
dispute late payments and keep the account open. Um, he said he can't really talk for morning because you know those things are just hard to do in general. Um, he said he said he but he does remove the late payments through factual disputing. So that's that. He said that the average um process is usually like four to six months. Um, they cannot open any new accounts. So like now, because because he's like, don't don't open any accounts. If I give that disclaimer to clients and then they open up new accounts, so they added more inquiries and this really isn't like fraud, then I charge them more because I'm like, you're you're making this longer than what it needs to be. Mm -hmm. Right. And um, he yeah, he typically charges per rounds of like four months. Mm -hmm. So um, so, yeah, it's each client for four months is whatever his rate is. Okay. Um, uh, anything and else? And just so you guys know, CM is not just one person. He has a whole team. He does under him, so he can take on. Like we actively talk to him and make sure he's good because we send a lot of leads his way. So like we want to make sure that he's able to give the best customer service and the best service period possible to all you guys. Mm -hmm. So we actively check in and make sure he's cool. And he's like, oh no, send them all. Send yeah, more. He, send check, more. he damn sure checking in with me. Boss, any more? No. Yeah. Like, I don't know. I don't, I put it in the chat. If anybody hit you up. Yeah, he also he also told me when it comes to your credit monitoring service, he did say identity IQ is the best. Mm -hmm. um, he, he says that for my score IQ, it only shows like the last two years worth of information. So anything past two years, it doesn't show that even though it may show up as like a derogatory wow. mark, you know? I never knew that. Okay. I, I didn't know that either. He told me, I said, really? So I started, you know, writing it down. <laughs> yeah, that's really good info. I was going to jump. I, because I was not, so I was sick. I had him do like four. I'm waiting to see how it works out. Mm -hmm. So I did hire him to see. I told him like, it's like temporary. Mm -hmm. Um, I didn't. There are some questions. He on probation I, period. Yeah, he on his probation period. <laughs> <laughs> but um, what I had, what I have not done is, I'm so grateful for these questions. Is I didn't ask him about um. I think I didn't ask him about the deleting the bankruptcies because I didn't have anyone who had a bankruptcy, mm -hmm. and I didn't ask him. So I'm gonna go back and ask talk to him. But he does send me screenshots of yep. everything that he did initially he was a little bit apprehensive about using dispute fox and i was like well why i said everyone's using it i said are you not familiar with it because if you're not then you know like let me know what works best for you because again i'm trying to move towards like you like where this is a business i'm not going to be hands-on doing every single thing i could do the consultations um and i'll even do the follow-up but doing the actual piece that's too much that takes too much time right and um but he he was initially he did not know how to mail the letters. Something was going on, and I didn't realize that I had to put in this credit. Like I put in the credit because he wanted to use stream letter stream. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But dispute Fox has their own Built in. part, so mm -hmm. we worked around that. And he got it working. He's like, "Oh, I'll figure it out," and he did. Good. 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 He better. And now mean? he knows for other people too. So that's <laughs> okay, thank you. You taught him something. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah. I was just talking to Dom like the other day. I'm like, you know, it's like crazy. Like, like we really employ people from other countries, and like just like to think about like I'm we over here looking up like how is it affecting them? Like, is it good money? Is it not enough? You know, but like just being able to create a global business is a good feeling. It's a good feeling. Um, I have nothing else tonight. So if you guys have questions and stuff like that, um, let me know where you're at and things like that. Can you hold the baby for a minute? Absolutely. He's like making me hot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He might cry. He knows that I'm not holding him. All right. All right, you guys. <laughs> they can't see. Nobody got any questions. I'm out. Late night. Right. Nope, I asked all my questions earlier. Okay. <laughs> Dom knows. I'm like, how do you do this? And yeah, all good. <laughs> Did Jen get you figured out? Like she got you all set up? Yes. Um, I do need to go in and um I still haven't looked at the videos you sent me to set up okay. minutes, but Perfect. that would be what I'll be doing between tonight and tomorrow afternoon. Perfect. All right, cool. Um, I did just have one before you said something because I came in about um that they do the survey is the survey is that part of like that's in our group thing right 
Like when they yeah, do a pre your, um, Yeah, so the survey is right after the calendar page after they book the appointment. Mm -hmm. So something else that you can do, um, if you find that people aren't filling out the survey, something else that you can do is we could flip flop the survey and the calendar um, so that they have to fill out the survey before they can actually book the appointment. We do send them text messages and emails where we're saying, hey, make sure you fill out your survey, but not everybody, you know, still with that, they still don't fill it out sometimes. So we could always flip flop that if you find that people aren't filling out the survey. So just let me know. That's always something that we can switch over. Yeah, that's what I'm going to have to end up doing because um, before an appointment, I was trying to look for his survey, but could not find it. So oh, I just, yeah. think he just didn't do it. So yeah, I know I'm personally going to switch it because I ain't got time. Yeah, you just got to flip flop it. And then all you want to do is go into your automations because there's a wait on um, when they... You want to show them how, um, how they can go into it? Yeah. Can you type in? Oh, never mind. Uh -huh. Oh, never mind. Go to credit board. Go to credit board. And then you'll want to go to the credit the mouse or snapshot. Here. Let me pull the mouse over here so I'm not like reach them um, all right let me go back uh show it under credit influencer snapshot there it is and then you got to share screen too yeah yeah he is hot i know well it's probably because like i'm wearing a sweatshirt and sweatpants and he's like overheating all right share screen yeah i just changed mine around so four million no, <laughs> just kidding. This is just the snapshot, so that's not real. <laughs> um, I just put it there to mess with people here. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so go into the automation, and I believe it's under. Is it didn't sign up? So hold on, let me think. Okay, okay, okay. Is this it? Yeah. Okay. So in the didn't sign up, you would want to change this to be like twenty minutes because you want to give them some time to actually fill out the survey since they're booking the appointment after the survey. So all you'd want to do is come in here and change this to like 20 minutes. It's going to allow for more time because you don't want them to say, Hey, like you didn't book your appointment yet. Like, and you didn't even give them time to book. Uh, that's what you're saying. I would only do 10 minutes though. Okay. Well, I, so the for you, can do, you can do what you want. All right. I'm just saying. But that's and then the only don't they have to adjust the way it would be on the site too? What do you mean? Like, like how in the funnel? Flop? Yeah, I told you. Yeah. Okay. So if you want to change it in here. But people might not know how so to flip flop. You see how like calendar survey. So you would just move the survey first just to make it like that. And then you would come in here, edit page. And it's going to take forever. Okay. And then when they fill this out here, you can make sure that it just says that it goes to next step. So that way it's going to go to that page. And then just make sure that your calendar says go to next steps, or I'm mm -hmm. sorry, your survey. And also check it on the mobile side as well by coming up here and clicking mobile. But you mm -hmm. just click here and just make sure it says go to next step. Because as long as you have it in the right order, it's always going to go to whatever that next step is. Oh. And then after calendar, again, come in here <clears throat> and just make sure that says go to next step. And I just always check it on both mobile and desktop just to make sure. Mm -hmm. um, in the month of October, we're going to be running a five-day challenge that's going to be based around helping you guys or helping people. Maybe you guys don't join, but it's going to be based on, what's it called? The Digital Real Estate Challenge. We're changing the name. We're working on the name, but we want to help people to be able to scale their digital business um, up within those five days. So like, it's going to be kind of like- um, Whether they have a digital business or they want to start, like if they have, the whole point is for people to have a service-based business, we want to teach them how they can create digital products. So God forbid, you know, there's another shutdown or something happens, you know, like, mm -hmm. or if people lose their jobs, like we want them to create some sort of digital asset um, and create, so that's why we call it like digital real estate because- mm -hmm. It's basically real estate for mm -hmm. the internet. <laughs> yeah, what's crazy is the first five-day challenge we did was 
two years ago in November. And over the weekend, we had a... No, it wasn't. It wasn't two years ago. It was like a year ago. Which one? Are you talking about Five Days of Freedom? No, we did one one? before that, the Digital Entrepreneur Membership. Oh, that one. Yes. That wasn't even like a real... Yeah, Yeah, so it was two years ago. That was two years ago. You know, when we did it, it was only $500. But when we were done, when we realized how much we put into it, we made it $1,000 and we just put it up. We never promoted it since then. Someone bought it this weekend. Off of, they Googled it and bought it for $1,000. So I'm dead on this uh, digital real estate and just putting your assets out there. You can continue to keep building like, you know, when you're really trying to scale, you want to have like a focus, but you can create a bunch of different products around things that you love and know. Like there's nothing holding you back. Set aside from credit, like yeah, anything that you know, like yeah. Melanie, for example. Like, is it tra- is it forex trading something like that? Right. Okay. So Melanie is skilled in that, right? So she was able to take what she knows in both industries of Forex and credit. And she's now been able to provide a solution to people that are in Forex and we're having a hard time getting funding to be able to invest into Forex. She has a solution now, Mm -hmm. right? And it's a digital product that she's created. But if she didn't know about credit, she could still create a digital product solely for people with Forex. Like there could be some other sort of problem that's out there with Forex and she might have the solution for it. You know, and she's super organized, so she might just be have something candlestick playbook, <laughs> something that's super, you know, like um, that might come easy to her and hard to other people, and she can provide that solution. So it doesn't matter like what you mm-hmm. know, you know something that other people don't know. Facts, and you can teach it to people. Mm-hmm. Um. Anything else? Anybody else have any questions or anything like that? Oh, and if you, so there's going to be a wait list coming out probably like in the next week. If you join the wait list, we're going to be giving away some big body gifts. We're going to give away a, probably like a content package where it's like, you know, the, uh, the lights, the, uh, what's that over there called? Stands. Stands. Um, we might give away a MacBook. What's another thing we can give away? McHale needs to Air- check his budget. Uh, uh, what was the <laughs> other one? Uh, iPad. iPad. We're giving it away at all. We're giving it away at all, man. We're giving away at all. So, and that's going to be to like the first people who sign up. So we're not even, we haven't even told anyone. So you just letting y'all know, you're probably going to see a wait list. If you get on the wait list and you grab, you, you're going to know. You're going to know exactly what you're in for. And it's going to be an amazing five days. Me and Dom haven't done a five-day challenge just by ourselves in two years and that one that we did two years ago some of the people that were in that i mean they just doing anything they doing anything i'm seeing them on instagram on beaches and stuff (laughs) um any other questions you guys or anything no you guys want to say good night to the baby then he's done probably stand up he's already asleep he's done oh here let me it'll be easier to show them on here I was on the Nobody, little dude. Yeah. Everybody, everybody making 30, 40, and 50? 30, 40, and 50 now? That is so cute. <laughs> My heart is melting. I'm like, oh. He's not <laughs> when it comes to the buffer, do, do y'all feel like it'd be messing up y'all, uh, y'all performance? No. Hell no. I thought it would, but no. So, I mean, how many times do you post a day? Like um, or would you post today? Yeah, I don't even know. All I right. post honestly. I was counting y'all post the other day. I was posting like she said, like every hour or two. <laughs> I'm like, I really don't know. I post like three times, four times, five times, just depending. Hmm. So, I would look at the. But I don't post. You know, I'm a TikToker, so I just be using uh repurpose IO. Right. So, but that shit is trash. Yeah. Um. So yeah, use the buffer and put as many in there as you can per day. So like right now, what I had my assistant do yesterday was go back and download all of my videos from January. Yeah. And she's going to go ahead. It's like 30 some videos and go ahead and schedule five per day 
in the daytime. And I got a whole different list for what I need posted at night, like overnight. I got a whole overnight playlist where overnight. Yeah, y'all be having the, uh, the, the finesse sales. So do y'all yeah. recommend doing that that type of stuff at night versus uh -huh. like Hell yeah. during the day? Every as often, far as the testimonials, how do y'all know when y'all going to do like a testimonial versus like game? Do y'all just like go back and forth? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just go very back and random. forth. It's very random. random. I can't keep up with our testimonials, so it's just like yeah. I just try to whenever I remember to post one. That's what like I'm even working on getting organized in a way where I can just have my stuff going, you know, forever and ever and ever and ever. That's probably King. I got to get with King. King. You know what? As soon as we get off this live, man, if you ready, I'm ready. As soon as we get off this live, me and you going to rap. Aren't you talking to somebody already? I'm okay. talking to Billionaire after that. Okay. Billionaire. I be like, yo, I really, 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 really be up. Like, y'all got to just catch me. So I be up like. Late? Yeah. Like so like, four? I'll it's be up four. at like the, I'll be up at like two o'clock, but I feel like nobody else is up. So like, I won't hit people up at like two o'clock because I feel like nobody else is up. But like during the daytime, all of like our done for you clients and like even like our mentorship that I mentioned last week, we got some people that joined that. It's been like we ain't been booked with engagements and just working on stuff. And then like I'll crash out at like nine o'clock and then get back up at like 12 and then go again. But I don't know what time everybody else be on. You could blow me up, bro. I won't feel like, oh, King's bothering me or anything like you could blow me up. I don't care. And you can hit Dom. <laughs> I'm always up. Hit Dom like, yo, is Mikel I'm over there? I'm up every, like, uh, four hours. Oh yeah, I'm God. up because the baby be up. Like, it's just... That's not why you're up. You're up down here working. I'm up because the baby up. Okay. Whatever. I'm up because the baby up. You're up because the baby's here and you need to keep funds up. <laughs> <laughs> Please. <laughs> All right, yo, I'm out so I can uh, I can do what I need to do tonight. And get with everybody. Um, yo, if you guys need to reach out to me or anything, just know that I'm up after noon. I mean, after midnight. Yeah, I'm so up after even know what time it is. I don't need to know what time it is. That's strike busting. Afternoon. <laughs> All right, you guys. Uh, appreciate it. Have a good night, y'all. All right, have a good night. Have a good night. Thank you. Bye. See you.